Hey, Dr. C here with you. I want to talk about vitamin B6 toxicity. So this is a common thing. Um, it's easy to get too much, and we can see a lot of symptoms that you just wouldn't expect from it. It's a really common B vitamin. We'll find it in a large amount of products, and many people can't tolerate it very well. So quick overview, B6 is essential. It's present in many foods. It's added to a lot of processed foods, and it's common in a wide variety of supplements. There's actually about six different vitamins that are collectively called B6. The one in supplements is most commonly pyridoxine, especially pyridoxine hydrochloride. Now, in order for your body to use pyridoxine, your liver has to convert it to pyridoxal 5-phosphate. We'll find that written as PLP or P5P most commonly. And if liver function is not ideal, that conversion may be compromised. So people could get plenty of different vitamins of B6, but if they can't activate them, they can be low in that. So if someone is low in that, they can have issues with how they make their neurotransmitters, the brain chemicals, their methylation reactions may not occur well, their immune system can be compromised, and they may not produce hemoglobin effectively. And B6 deficiency actually does happen. When people get too little, they can see nerve pain, dry skin, depression, mouth inflammation, memory lapses, even seizures. That's how those various problems can manifest with specific symptoms. Now, an odd paradox is that these are a lot of the same symptoms of B6 toxicity, and we'll talk about why. The issue is that if there's too much of it, it blocks the body from converting any. So that's why too much can look like too little. People can get deficient in B6 uh, if they're just low in protein overall, if they've got a high alcohol intake, or if they have malabsorption. So we can see that with thyrogastric syndrome, where there's the autoimmune attack against the gut. Celiac disease can also cause that, and other autoimmune diseases can as well. We know that many medications can trigger B6 toxicity. Uh, several can do that, hydralazine, various glucocorticoids, cortisol, hydrocortisone, canalog, a lot of meds can do that. So how common is B6 toxicity? Well, it's not rare. In the modern world, in the United States, data has shown that about 18 to 35% of adults are somewhere below range. And it's different state to state for varying reasons, but yeah, it does happen. In, in some cases, it can be more common than others. So how much do we need? Well, not all that much, about uh, 1.9 milligrams from the diet for, for most adults. Women can need a little bit less than men. Uh, those who are younger and children need quite a bit less. Breastfeeding a little bit more. And it's in a lot of food sources. So we see things like chickpeas have a lot. Uh, tuna, salmon, chicken breast. Potatoes are really high sources in that. Bananas have a fair amount. You know, I've talked about banana peels. The peels are even higher than bananas are. <laughs> Bulger wheat is rich in that, onion, spinach. So it's in a lot of foods, but some don't use it that well and they can get low. Now, because of the issues about toxicity, many argue against using synthetic B6. And I've chosen years ago not to include that in our daily reset pack. So we don't use pyridoxine hydrochloride. We only use pyridoxal 5-phosphate. And the cool thing about that is it just doesn't create the toxicity issues. So where else do you find synthetic B6? Well, a lot of places, um, sports drinks, energy drinks, a lot of the, you know, I love nutritional yeast. I like the taste of it. I love the nutrients that it offers. But besides Ceres brand, which I'm not tied to, uh, I, all of them have synthetic B vitamins. Generally, that includes synthetic B6. You see a lot of it in that. Electrolyte supplements, uh, fortified cereals, sometimes herbal tea blends can have that, energy drinks, energy chews, and it can all add up. You can get too much. The earliest recognitions of B6 toxicity were 1983. And what they found was that blood levels of B6 that are above 30 micrograms per liter can correlate with toxicity. Now, please know that we talked about those foods. You'll never get toxic on B6 from foods. 
You've got a variety of vitomers in there, and you've got amounts that are below which are never a problem for the body to clear. But once you start adding in supplements and processed foods with that, it can get to be too much. So there have been a lot of stories of people to where they've had symptoms, especially anxiety, uh, nerve pain, uh, tremors, insomnia. They've had these symptoms like overstimulation or like nerve toxicity. And they often just chased around trying to find the cause of that, never thought about B6 toxicity. In fact, not only never thought about it, but in many cases, it could seem like B vitamins might help with those symptoms. And I've seen folks to where they've taken more and more. And, and yeah, there are a lot of popular recommendations for B vitamins helping symptoms like that, but the synthetic ones in these high doses, they can make that worse. And in general, this is one more reason why I'm, I'm not a fan of massive amounts of nutrients. We, we need them, they're important, we can get too little, but the types that we take and the quantities in which we take them are essential. And you can get dangerous amounts of a lot of nutrients. We've seen this with iodine as well. So how much is too much? How much does it take to start getting harmful? Well, the studies have varied. Um, 100 milligrams is too much. <laughs> no real debate about that. Most adults can get complications on that. There are reports, however, suggesting that as little as 24 milligrams of B6 can be harmful for some people. So that's the total cumulative dose. So action steps here, get enough B6 in your diet. You know, you want a variety of foods that are rich in that. Uh, salmon, chicken breast, tofu, potatoes, avocado, sweet potatoes, uh, chickpeas. These are all great sources of that. I do like to supplement with pyridoxal 5-phosphate. I've added that to the daily reset pack. You know, in the range of five to seven milligrams is appropriate. I put 6.7 in the daily reset pack but avoid B6 toxicity. You know, definitely if you've got symptoms, even if you don't, because you don't want them to emerge. So take a look at any sources you've got of pyridoxine and pyridoxine hydrochloride. Consider your vitamins, any processed foods, especially fortified cereals, uh, vitamin waters, sports products, those are the big ones. And be aware of the top symptoms. So if you're off in some way, anxiety, memory loss, nerve pain, heartburn, think about B6 toxicity as a possible issue. All right, Dr. C here with you. Trying to look out for you here. <laughs> One more thing to think about, but yeah, it's important. All right, take good care. We'll talk in real soon.